Thank you, everybody. We're coming to a top of version progress meeting, April the 13th at 10 a.m. at the field office. We'll start with one and two progress uh, and, and plan activities for the next two weeks for the contractor. Okay. Uh, we wrapped up the temporary detour last week. Um, over here at Mulberry, we've got slab poured. They're pouring sidewalk today. Uh, uh, top down. We need to get the her stuff here on Monday. What time is it? Uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have anything big, Diana. You no, you, it's just tile work. Everything so I'm you got. So. Are you going to be working one side of the car? Right? Yeah, what I'm going to try to do is get the outside, work on the outside right. first. Yeah, but so one side of the bridge. Of the one side of the bridge. Yeah, so we can have this and walk mm -hmm. on the opposite side. Of the yeah, we don't need anything in traffic to do that, so right. we just have to have a sidewalk uh, closed or, and I don't know if you can narrow it down. Where people could walk by, maybe better off if it was just closed. Except but there's really no place for a sidewalk on the north side, right? It, north north sidewalk doesn't go anywhere. No sir. So closing that was not a big deal. Right. But uh, we just. Yeah, I don't have a problem people walking by. I can put traffic cones up and just. Yeah. And just, okay. okay. Yeah. Especially on that south side, if people want to have to double cross. Yeah, as long as they stay organized, it won't be a big mess in people's way. We don't want the the local. The local residents live back. River in, Road. In I want River Road after me. <laughs> you order, no, you don't want that. That's not good. <laughs> you just got to worry about the drunks living in the woods. Yeah, I'm just saying the local, the local natives that live back in the woods. Yeah. So, I'd say if we're close to being completely gone, uh, we'll go ahead and do yeah, we'll go ahead and set up to do the do a final walkthrough on it. It ought to be <clears> relatively <throat> short on this one. Give me about a week notice. That way we can send an invite to everybody, you know, three, three days a week. Probably would be better if we had Diana down. How long are you expecting it to take you? At no, the race? No, Diana. I'm working on there, but it's, uh, I think I'm down to like nine weeks. It should be installed. It should. <coughs> yeah, that's probably best. That's what JD suggested. So you've got think. a couple months of work yeah. to, to do everything you got to do there. We definitely need to advertise it, put it on the web page, do the email oh, thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. JR knows you're coming. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Okay, two things we're trying for this project that I, I haven't really, I've done one of them. So we're building the, the shapes which are going to look like this, out of clay. So this will be clay. And this is a pretty vertical, I mean it's nearly vertical piece and so I don't want it to just slump off and fall. So we put latex rubber in little little lines. And so when the clay slab goes on here, that will help stick it and keep, prevent it from moving and falling. But it's flexible enough that as the clay, clay dries, it shouldn't cause cracking. That's, that's kind of a big deal. If you have something that's immobile and it held it on, then as it dried and shrunk, it wouldn't be able to move. So I think we fixed that problem. The other thing is, a lot of times people, will, when it's on flat, put down a bed of grog so again, as the grog's uh, clay that's been fired and crushed up, and so again, that acts kind of like ball bearings. As the clay dries and shrinks, it can move. So we're, but it's a big pain in the ass to always have all that grog everywhere. It gets in the glazing, it gets in the kilns. 
you're always having to spend a lot of time and labor dusting it off before you glaze it and that type of thing. So what I've started doing is sealing the wood. So this has already been sealed with a, like a waterproof sealant. If I put water on here, it would beat up and that will prevent any moisture from penetrating. And then what we're going to do is take some oil, just normal vegetable oil, and we're going to coat this with it and put the clay on it so that the clay won't stick to this. It'll be able to move easy, but what will keep it on is these little ridges. So that's the plan. The one other thing I'm kind of thinking is going to work is in the back side of tile, if it has little indentions like this, the negative, that provides extra bends kind of in the clay and it makes it stronger that it doesn't warp in the drying as much. And so we could go back in and cut it out, but this is going to put it in from the get-go. So I'm going to do an inch and I'm going to do three quarters of an inch, I think. Really? That's thick. That's up to That's up to here. That's true. And then that way the extrusions will give us another, we'll probably be out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to try three quarter of an inch thick slabs. It's cement and paper fiber. And, um, Traditionally, people cover their tables with maybe canvas or um, maybe poor plaster slab. And so this has the same qualities as both those because they're absorbent, so clay won't stick to it. So we stretched out the slab. Now we're going to roll it. stitch it together. We've got it overlapped. So then I'm going to draw and I like to think of the needle tool as kind of like a little bitty clay mixer. And what we're doing is we're combining the two clay slabs. We let them overlap a little bit. And then I'm going to take some clay and just shove it in here. I don't want that seam coming apart in the drying or the firing or 10 years from now. Okay, so I'm pretty confident that that's a seam that doesn't exist anymore. So then, water and a serrated rib. And we're going to scrape it. Go ahead and spray it down. And again, this is compressing it. And also um, making sure it's uniform and, and level. Okay, so we had the foam company cut out one inch pieces of foam that is this shape, um, but they're 5% smaller. And they made them all for the bridge that we're going to give that to the contractor. Um, so when they cast the bridge, they'll be exactly this shape, but 5% smaller. We're doing that because then this one is going to be a little bit larger than what it will be because clay shrinks. This clay body was going to shrink 7%. So we're going to have a 2% wiggle room that will be our grout and just a way to make adjustments so we don't have to do any cutting when we want to do the installation. So I'm just going to draw, just draw it. it. Two things. These little ridges, any type, anytime just the glazes on there, it'll be more interesting because it'll be buried. But also this provides tooth for our sprigs to really stick to. So we're, it's kind of like scoring the entire surface and getting it ready for, for what we're going to do. So we're debating. I've got two clay bodies. One I use is um, mixed up by armadillo, and it's my personal clay body. And it's two parts fire clay and one part grog, real direct. 
simple clay body. The other one is, is a more plastic clay body. It's the one I use for the throwing on my work. And it's a little finer grained. So it makes a better uh, cast with the springing molds. Um, we're going to see what we can get away with using the tough, durable stuff. Because in the long run, it's more durable, tough, more like a brick clay. I'm just carry it. And we'll cut that. This is it. This is the only drawing I have of what I'm doing. And it's, what, two inches? And so now we're transforming the, actually on my computer screen, it was more computer screen size. So we're gonna put this onto that. So they, they turned out real good. And that's the eight four and, and four. Eight. So eight has dolomite and zinc. Mm -hmm. For the most part, on the exterior of the bridge, you're just going to see from the distance. You're not going to be able to get too close. So we're going to use little frogettes, which are in between tadpoles and fully developed toads, and make a, make a geometric shape out of them. Two more minutes to hold at the this temperature, and then we'll be done. And I'm going to show you something you should never do. I'm going to open the kiln up and see what happens. We're going to do this very quickly. And it's uh, 1883 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're just going to keep it real quick. You ready? Looks great. Happy. We've got the horizontal panels fired. We've got about half of them fired now for the outside. And very pleased with the, uh, the glazes. And it looks great here, but I wanted to show you what it looks like outside the sunshine because that's when they really sparkle. Follow me. So this is how it is actually going to look. And you can see the light and shadows that are happening. You can see where the sun's hitting all that crazy and the way the glaze just sparkles. And uh, it's just going to look outstanding out there in the sunshine. We're very happy with it. It's cool to see these kids come up here. And, you know, you think about when you were a kid and there were just like these few places like where you grew up in your hometown that was just sort of magical and, and cool and still sticks with you in your brain. And so, you know, hopefully that will do that for a couple of kids, this thing. You know, they'll come and they'll see the, the life cycle, the Gulf Coast Toad, and they'll go home and they'll see toads at their house. And, you know, we'll just be excited. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, and we'll talk to the next bridge. We've had a great time. We'll see you guys later.